good evening all welcome to the new session i wish all my subscribers a very happy new year so we will try to see some cases we will try to see clues from clues which are there in the case try to advise an investigation and come to the diagnosis so coming to the first case this is a child you can see here there is renal calculi there are even vesicle calculi even there are pathological fractures and even altered bone density so we will try to see what are the causes of calculi in child and what is the clue in this case and how we can come to a diagnosis based upon investigation so in this case we can see as i already mentioned there are renal calculi and even vesicle calculi there are pathological fractures and here you can see there is a translucent metaphyseal zone with sclerosis in the diaphysis which gives the classical metaphyseal wasting appearance and even you can, you can also see you can also see there are there is you can also see there are altered bone density in the all the visualized bones so in child either it may be altered metabolism in the calcium or phosphorus or oxalates which will gives uh, gives rise to calculi in child so this was a case of uh, primary hyperoxaluria so these are the clues which are there which will come to a conclusion so what is the investigation we have to do the investigation is urinary oxalate levels we have to see there will be raised urinary oxalate levels and the diagnosis is primary oxaluria or hyperoxaluria so whenever you see renal calculi vesicle calculi pathological fractures altered bone density whether it may be osteosclerosis or osteoporosis and with um, metaphyseal wasting uh, definitely suspect uh, primary oxaluria second case uh, adult he is it is an adult so we will try to see the findings we will we will try to see the clue in this case and we will come to a conclusion based upon the investigation so in this case you can clearly see there is typical resorption subperiosteal resorption of the radial aspect of the uh, middle first and second fingers you can see so there is subperiosteal resorption of the radial aspect of the proximal and middle phalanx proximal and middle phalanx of the second and third fingers okay and then you can also see there is subchondral resorption of the distal one third of the clavicles or lateral one the lateral ends of the clavicles or distal end of the clavicles and even there are bronzes so what is the investigation we have to do in this case that is serum parathyroid hormone and calcium we have to correlate and the diagnosis is hyperparathyroidism next case is an infant you can see there are uh, what is the clue in this case you can see there are infarcts these are the multiple infarcts you can see multiple infarcts noted in various territories in, in bilateral mca pca and even in the thalami there is no significant enhancement so when stroke in infant is very rare infarcts in infant is very rare and whenever you see infarcts in multiple territories in infant definitely suspect melas so what is this melas what is the investigation we have to advise serum lactic acid levels and the serum and lactic acid levels will be elevated so the diagnosis is mitochondrial encephalopathy lactic acidosis and stroke so that is called melas next case you can see young adult uh, here you, so what is the clue in this case you can see there is massive splenomegaly here this is the massive splenomegaly here you can see there is avian noted in the right femoral head and also you can see there are head shaped vertebra there will be central depression in the vertebra which gives the classical head shaped vertebra so what is the investigation we have to advise so what is the clue in this case is massive splenomegaly avian femoral head and head shaped vertebra so investigation we should advise is cbp with sickling test and the diagnosis we can suspect is sickle cell disease next case here you can see child with hyperpigmentation hepatomegaly and joint pains so there is in the, we can come to a conclusion based upon the history only so there will be hyperpigmentation hepatomegaly with joint pains in a child here you can see there is hyperdense liver in a plain scan only you can see the liver is very hyperdense radio dense and even the outline of the liver is also clearly seen and here you can see this is the plain scan here you can see there when compared to the splenic hu values the liver hu is raised so this is hyperdense liver on plain ct so what is the <coughs> clue so this is unenhanced liver density whenever it is greater than 75 hu which is classical for hyperdense liver so this can occur in iron deposition iron deposition can occur in hemosiderosis thalassemia hemochromatosis amyodorona thorostat exposure and even wilson's disease 
so what is the clue in this case this is the hyperdense liver and hepatomegaly along with uh, hyperpigmentation of bronze skin and arthralgia or joint pains so what we have to advise hfe gene mutations we have to advise we have to also see urine uh, transfer in saturation levels and um, serum ferritin levels and the diagnosis in this case is hemochromatosis so hemochromatosis there will be increased iron deposition in the organs with or significant organ damage whereas in hemosiderosis the organ damage will be very late and usually not seen next this is a dwarf child uh, we will try to see the clues in this case here you can see there is triple epiphysis in the right femoral head and also you, you have you can see there are no epiphysis epiphysis are not at all visualized in the either in the radius ulna and even in the metatarsals and the phalanges and there are short stubby fingers so dwarf child short stubby fingers or hands uh, fingers in the hands there is triple epiphysis and absent are small epiphysis so what is the this is the clue and what is the investigation we have to do serum t3 t4 th and the diagnosis cretinism or congenital hypothyroidism next case newborn with ambiguous genitalia investigation clue and diagnosis here you can see we'll try to see uh, here you can see there is I, there is uterus and even in the there is even uh, penis and testicular -like structures so there are ambiguous genitalia so there is both uterus and even uh, phallus that is uh, testis along with the penis and also you can see the adrenal glands are enlarged and typical these adrenal glands are enlarged typically showing cerebriform pattern so whenever you see child with ambiguous or newborn with ambiguous genitalia and even adrenals are enlarged with cerebriform appearance typically this is the clue in this case definitely suspect uh, congenital adrenal hyperplasia and we have to advise 21 alpha hydroxylase enzyme deficiency and mutation in cyp21a2 gene so the diagnosis is congenital adrenal hyperplasia thanks to dr vilam et sir for contributing this case uh, i thank all my subscribers and wish all my subscribers a very happy new year once again thank you all